Hey everyone, welcome back to Level Up Lead Gen. It is day three. And so we are gonna dive all into content curation, calendar management, how you know what content to write about and how using strategy to build the right content can help you for both organic search and exposure across those clients that you're so hard trying to attract. My name's Courtney Zenz, the Accidental Business Coach, and I'm glad you're here and you found us to take you through this particular training. As you know, we've already had two great days of content and we've got several more on the docket. So welcome to day three. We're going to dive right in. And the first thing I like to talk about during this session is what type of content are you passionate about creating? Are you really good at cameras and being on social media and doing the latest little trends in these short form videos? Are you really good at writing content? I love blogging. I'm really good at doing it early in the morning, not so much at the end of the day. But what type of content lights you up? Sometimes people are not comfortable on camera, but they're really good at talking. So a podcast might be something good for you. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew with too much content, but I'm going to show you today how I can take a single topic and create a whole bunch of content for that week about the topic. And my topic varies based on the ideal client I'm trying to reach, the mechanism and manner in which I reach them, and who the audience is of the platform where I'm sharing specific things. You've got to find those clients where they are. Don't post a bunch of stuff on LinkedIn if your clients are stay-at-home moms. They're probably not on LinkedIn, right? And vice versa, I don't post a ton of stuff directed at dads out on Instagram. I find more dads are out on YouTube or Reddit, right? There's so many different places that people live, but you've got to look at who your ideal client is and then build a content calendar around them. If you're new to business, you might be wondering, what's a content calendar? I don't even have one, and I'm not sure how to start. And I'll tell you, every single month, I sit down and I figure out with my team where the areas are that we're deficient, where we're not ranking, because I spend a lot of time working on trying to build organic reach, meaning Google, right? People type something in into the search functionality. And then I want my name at Tiny Transitions from a sleep coaching standpoint to come up. And as I'm building the brand of the accidental business coach, I'm going to do the same thing out there as well, trying to figure out where business owners are struggling and how I can help them with the right content. So I don't just create content to create content. I strategically try to figure out what is the right content to create this time, this week, based on this particular happening in the world, right? And I build that content appropriately. It's daylight savings soon. So I'm going to be building some content around that because I know every new parent's going to be like, how do I spring forward with my kid and not mess up their sleep schedules, right? I'm doing a whole lot of stuff here with the Accidental Business Coach. And I do a lot of different speaking and a lot of different corporate consulting on the business side. So I'm trying to figure out what resonates with the leaders I'm speaking to from a corporate consulting standpoint and see what content I can create that would help their employees. So I'm constantly trying to figure out strategic content, but that content calendar is going to be what I live and die by. So I'm actually going to show you what I do every single month. The first thing first at Target or sometimes even the dollar store, nothing specific, I get a very basic monthly planner and I just want the monthly planner. This one happens to be for 2024 and for 2025. And all it has in it are blank months. And I use this just for writing down and scratching out and notating things. I'm a paper person. If you wanna do this out with like a Google calendar, Great, you can absolutely do that. I just find that I'm a paper person and when an idea comes up, I put it down, I have an ongoing list and this planner comes with me everywhere. So there's a lot that I'm very forward thinking on from a tech standpoint, but I still very much love the old school paper planners for both my personal life and business management. So I try to figure out first and foremost, what are the content types that I as a business owner wanna create? I'm either going to do podcasts or not. I'm either going to do blogs or not. I'm either going to do short form social media like reels or I'm not. I might do long form video content or vlogs, right? A video blog on something like YouTube or I'm not, right? So there's lots of different types of content. You've got to create content that you can first be comfortable creating and second, 
be consistent in creating because consistency is what helps you grow whatever that channel is that you're trying to reach. We talked about it the other day. I love writing content. I do not love carrying my phone around all the time and recording my entire life with my family. So for me, Instagram has been something I really struggle with because I'm great on lives. I'm great doing reels. I have a great ca camera presence, but I don't like carrying my phone around all the time where I feel like I almost have to, to have a curated message and stories and all this different stuff. And I find it's a very like yin and yang relationship. I have like a love hate relationship with it, but you know what? I get 15,000 clicks a month on my tiny transitions website and it grows every single month. Here's why. Because I'm strategic about the content I'm writing and I'm consistent about the content I'm writing and I'm writing good quality content, not just a bunch of crap. Okay. That has helped me over the years to grow where I then show up higher in search, which ends up lasting longer. The second you stop posting on Instagram, bye, your account is as good as done. And I didn't want to build my business strategy off of that. So for me, I'm doing all of these different things, but with different purposes and a different strategy behind it. You've got to figure out what you're good at doing and then sit with a blank calendar template or just Google empty February blank calendar and start to write out what are things I would want to share as a business owner, right? If you know each week you're going to write a blog, perfect blog. If you know maybe twice a month, you're going to guest on a podcast somewhere, great. Podcast, podcast. Okay. And you start filling in the calendar with all of these different things. Now I have my own podcast for the kids sleep show. So we put out new episodes every week. Two a month are on sleep. Two a month are generally guests in the parenting space, right? That come on. So I have kind of a cadence for what I'm talking about. Last week, I had someone come on from a company called Bite Brave talking about allergy introduction with newborns to minimize the long-term risk of allergies in children, right? She's a founder in Philly. We got connected through a past sleep client of mine. So she came on and talked all about her company, Bite Brave, which I think is great. And it aligns perfectly with my target audience, new parents, right? I'm launching the Accidental Business Coach podcast. That's going to have business knowledge and education and coaching for people through a podcast. So each week I'm going to have consistency every Wednesday at 8 a.m., just like today, it's Wednesday, a new episode went out on my Kids Sleep Show podcast for when you, uh, what to do when you rock a baby to sleep, right? So every week I kind of know, hey, I'm going to do one blog post, typically posted on Tuesdays. I'm going to do one podcast, typically posted on Wednesdays. And then in between there, I'm going to have other types of content go out, which we're going to talk about, right? But as a business owner, you probably have reviews or testimonials from happy clients who have worked with you, right? Even new consultants or coaches in the space have someone in some way that they have impacted where they could get a quote from that person, right? So that could be a type of content. Now, maybe you don't post one every single week, but you might stagger it. So every other Friday, you do a testimonial. Since Fridays are low engagement days, it shows on your grid. Don't expect 9 million likes, but it's out there. So when people find something else of interest in your content, they're also seeing some validation that you know what you're doing, right? And then you sprinkle in the other types of content that are gonna help you build a no factor, a like factor, and a trust factor with clients. Nobody just wants to go out and be like, Courtney's so great, Courtney's so great again, heard that Courtney is so great. Well, like what value are you bringing to me besides like talking about how great you are, right? I hate when coaches do that. I want you to show me value, right? So for me, how I build value is figuring out and researching, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and I'm actually gonna show you my research process every single week. But I try to figure out, like, what are people looking for? And then I define those content types. So I'll have podcast, which might be on a topic. I'll have blog, which might be on a topic, right, that people are looking for. Then I have social content that just sits on social. But by starting with either the blog or the podcast, I've created my entire week's content, right? If I write a blog post about how to put a baby down if they fall asleep in your arms, right? Or what domain authority is with your website domain and why it's important you pay attention to it, right? So if I write something like that, then my reel might be loosely associated with that and a call to action of like, 
read the blog for more on how to fix this. Read the blog on more, right? So my call to action using some of these tools on social might be like, comment blog, and I'll send you a link to the latest blog, right? Comment sleep steps, and I'll send you a link to our $47 a month, a month course and coaching program, right? So I use some of these different tools in my content curation strategy, which I'm going to show you, okay? So that I can first define what type of content I'm comfortable and consistent making, and then how I'm going to distribute it across all of the different channels. The biggest thing I see with so many of the coaches that I have in the consulting business here is the inability to be consistent with content because everybody wants it to be a quick win. Everybody wants it to be a quick win. I posted a blog and I didn't get any leads. I'm not posting any more content. It took me three years of consistency to grow tiny transitions to what it is. I am just launching the brand of the accidental business coach. I have no domain authority. I have very few backlinks. I have a ton of testimonials because I'm great at what I do in business coaching, but I haven't built out that brand or the content or the following or anything yet. Like I'm building it as we speak here in 2024, right? I've got a ton of people. I mentor a ton of people. I coach a ton of people. So I've got great reviews, but I don't have the content to build an audience with value yet, right? So you're going to kind of watch along as I build this throughout the year for the accidental business coach, right? So I have to first figure out what I'm going to talk about. Blog, testimonial, freebie, podcast, real, uh, you know, uh, engagement type posts. Like, tell me what book you're reading at the beach this summer, right? People don't ask that because they care. They ask it because they want you to comment, right? It's engagement. Engagement triggers the algorithm to go, hey, show this post to more people. They don't actually care what book you're reading, okay? So... You want to figure out what your content types are, but then you got to define distribution, right? So every single week I have a whole bunch of Canva templates. Okay. I use the paid version of Canva. It's the best investment for 15 bucks a month. And you know what I have to do? I create a podcast. So I need an icon for the podcast that's going to go out on social. Then I need an icon for the featured image of the podcast, different size. Then I need a different icon for Pinterest, different size to showcase the podcast right? So let alone one piece of content, the podcast is three tiles inside of Canva. Okay. Then I do the same thing with a story. Now it's four tiles. Okay. So you can start to see how quickly this stuff adds up. And then if I do a reel related to the topic, now I need a reel cover, five pieces of content for a single piece of content right? So you want to make sure that whatever you decide to bite off, it's not more than you can chew. Start small, start with one platform and be consistent on it and then start to expand, right? I have an amazing VA who now I can say, here's the piece of content, go do it. And she knows where to put it, how to put it, what tile to use, where it needs to go. And it saves me a ton of time as a business owner. Whereas before I was like, oh, it's got to go here and it's got to look like this. It's got to go here and it's got to look like this, right? Not everybody has the benefit of having a VA, right? And you only have so many hours in your business to work. So start with like one place and clearly define one piece of content that has consistent brand look and feel. And that can be consistently populated out to the different places. As I mentioned, one podcast is five different tiles. Okay. Same for blogs. Different look, different links, different URLs, right? All this different stuff. So once you define the content type, you have to define the distribution channel. Are you planning to have a Pinterest presence? Are you planning to have a YouTube presence? Are you planning to have a TikTok presence? Are you planning to have a LinkedIn presence? Are you planning to have an Instagram presence? Are you planning to have a Facebook presence? Are you planning to have a Facebook group presence, right? You then have a newsletter presence for the email people that open the emails, right? Like you got to figure out like, what is your distribution channel? And then you've got to define it. I create a podcast. That podcast gets published at 8 a.m. on Wednesday. It immediately then goes to here, 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 and here. It's on my website. I'm driving the traffic to my website because that's an SEO play. I don't want people just clicking, you know, to read the podcast somewhere else. I want them on my website to listen to the podcast out there, right? Instead of going to Spotify. Now you can find it in Spotify. You could find it in Apple and Android 
an Amazon, right? But I really want to drive people to my website because it's clicks. And guess what clicks are? SEO, right? More clicks I get, the more Google thinks I'm important and the more Google ranks me higher than everybody else. Okay, so make no mistake, everything I'm doing is strategic. Okay, so you've got to define your distribution channels. What do you like writing about? Where do you want it to live? And then how are you going to get the message out? Right. I was walking the dog last night and I, I usually talk to Kelly on my team and I didn't talk to her last night because it was like five o'clock and I'm like, OK, what am I going to listen to? And I went into podcasts and I was like, all right, let me find something. And I'm not a huge fan of like business ones because I don't have a problem with confidence. I don't have a problem with my business. Uh, I think a lot of people are kind of full of it. So like the business coaching ones where it's like, get out of your own way. Like, I don't need the rah rah stuff right now. Like, I'm good with my business. Right. Then I'm like, well, what do I want to listen to? Okay. Um, I don't like non or I don't like fiction stuff. So I don't listen to that. Like, you know, I just like, I was going through my thing and I'm like, all right, I don't want to, I, I, I eat healthy. I exercise. My mindset's good. You know what I mean? So I was really struggling, but I love celebrity smut, right? I'm on people.com once a day. I'm on the daily mail.com once a day. Like no matter how busy I am, I find a minute to see what's going on with Harry and Megan, right? Guilty pleasure. So I was like, ooh, podcast. And there's this one on this terrible story about this Ruby Frank, who was an influencer on YouTube. And I keep seeing the posts about it, but I haven't read in on like what happened, right? So I actually listened to a podcast last night on the walk and I didn't get through it, but it was like a, a news type podcast about like the rise and fall of the Frankie family or whatever. So it was like, ooh, that captures my interest, right? You got to create content that makes people want to listen to it, to engage with it to want to get more from you, right? Every time I do the lab, every time I do level up lead gen, every time I teach a training or give away a piece of content or try to share some tactical tip, I always get comments that say like, every time I come to level up lead gen, Courtney teaches me something new. I can't wait, this is my third time doing it and I learned something new, right? Like I'm building value for you, right? So my hope is, that before you go hire a business coach for five or 600 bucks a month, that isn't going to provide the value that you're going to get from someone like me. I can earn my place as your business coach or to do a strategy session with you, right? Or to help work with you in some capacity to make your business better. And I do it for starters by offering this, a free training session that goes over eight days, eight hours of my time, giving you all the knowledge that's up here right? So you've got to figure out for your content strategy, what content you're really comfortable talking about. You see guys, I don't use notes. I don't have like a PowerPoint slide with a bunch of talking points. I have seven things I'm talking about today. That's it, right? Just so I don't miss one because I have a squirrel brain. That's it. And everything's up here. So I've got to figure out how to get it to you. Most of you in the coaching space, your knowledge is up here. How do you properly convey to success how to change something? The last thing you want to do is set somebody up to fail right? By giving them just a nugget and then they fail. You know why? They're not going to seek you out to buy your full coaching. They're going to think you're an idiot. I see it all the time and I've seen it for years in the sleep coaching space. You're like, why do you give away so much for free? You should hold that back to private clients. I'm like, no, if I give somebody something for free, one, it should make an impact. Two, it should help them. And if it does help them, then I don't need to have them hire me because I solve their problem. And you know what it's going to do? Create referrals for me and my business because they're going to go, Courtney's the best. She helped me for free. And we didn't even need to sleep train because of what I learned from her. And then they're going to tell 55 other people, right? It all comes back, my friends. That's why I give away so much for free, what we talked about yesterday. That's why I add so much value in my sleep coaching packages. I am very specific about who we work with at Tiny Transitions. I have a very strong brand and I'm not going to ruin that reputation. I take very much pride in the clients that we work with, with my sleep coaching business, the same with business coaching, right? I need and want you to be successful in your business because that shows I'm doing a good job. But I also can't overwhelm you so much that you feel paralyzed or don't get positive results from what I'm teaching. I've also been to the 60 minute webinars that suck. You hop on with this like promise of grandeur and then they suck. And at the end, they're like, buy my thing for 500 bucks a month. It's like, really? That's all I get. Some template you probably chat GPT and an Excel spreadsheet. Like, no thanks. I don't want to work with you. Right. So, like, I'm earning my place and I do the same type of sessions as I'm doing here with sleep coaching clients. I call it making over bedtime. And it's a five day series that just talks about different parts of sleep. 
And then at the end, if they want coaching, great. If they needed nothing and got sleep, even better, right? Because they're going to share with their friends. So again, all cyclical. I need to figure out alignment for when to post. So when you create this content, when does it make sense? Sleep consultants, I'll tell you when it makes sense. Two in the morning. Why? Because the whole world is sleeping. So you have a better shot at your content being shown to the person you want because they're up at two in the morning and their kid is crying, right? People who are going to the gym. When do you typically go to the gym if you're a working professional? 5 a.m., 5 p.m., right? So when do you want to show your content to that person? Probably not while they're working out, but perhaps in the unwind period between seven and nine at night, right? If they're getting up at five, they're probably going to bed at nine. If they're up at five, they're not looking at their phone. They're exercising, taking a shower, getting in their truck and driving to Delaware, like my husband, every day at five o'clock, right? So you've got to figure out for your target market where they are, who you're talking to, and when they're going to be online. Yesterday on LinkedIn, I posted something a little bit cheeky. I love to golf, okay? Since I've had kids, I have not been able to golf as much. I was in a golf league when I was in corporate. I was the only female in the golf league at Rico where I worked. And we had a blast. I learned how to play golf from those guys. I kicked ass at golf and I had a real good time doing it. And I love golfing. Every year I enter to go to the Masters. My brother entered one year and he got the tickets. First year he entered, which is impossible, by the way. And he took my husband. So him and my husband went down to Augusta. So last year on LinkedIn or yesterday on LinkedIn, I posted, if your kids slept better, you could golf more. Why do I say that? Well, because a lot of times, especially if you're a working professional, golf outings are totally normal, right? You do a golf outing for charity. You do a golf outing for sales, right? My husband has to play golf a couple of times a year for his company. He's the CFO of a company, but he's like, I gotta go play golf tonight with all these people, you know? But he likes playing golf. So it's not like it's twist my arm, right? But I'm speaking to that audience with that statement intentionally, right? At 2 a.m., I wouldn't post that on Instagram. Here's why. Because nine times out of 10, it's the mom that's up with the baby and they don't want their husband golfing more. And I'm being a little bit stereotypical, but I love to golf too. But that message would not resonate with me at 2 a.m. I just want my kids to sleep, right? So it's like, you've got to figure out the right targeting for the right messages. And it's funny because one of the national account managers from Rico, who I worked with a long time ago, sent me a DM last night. And he's like, you're hilarious. And... um you know, a couple other nice things, which I don't need to say. But then he also was like, um, I loved your comment, you know, how cheeky, like blah, 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 you know, whatever. I, I like worked with these guys for years. So um, it was fun, but you got to figure out who you're speaking to and make sure that it's hitting that right audience. Okay. After you align your schedule for engagement, you got to look at competitive intelligence. That's what I want to show you here. I'm going to show you actually how I do my research every single week and then talk about how I do the batch curation and content. So I'm going to share my screen, which I haven't done yet. So we're going to pop over here. And so I'm going to be looking to the right on the camera, but you're going to see my screen over here on the right hand side. And so with this particular lesson, what I did was I actually just went out and I grabbed a few people in the sleep coaching space that I... And no, uh, you know, just across the country, different sizes, shapes, you know, et cetera. So what I did was I said, okay, who are these people and what are they doing? Branded, non-branded, paid, organic. Like what are people doing out here, both worldwide and across different sectors, Singapore, the UK, the US. So I dive in to say, all right, let's look at tiny transitions worldwide. What is my website authority score? This is something you need to pay attention to because most people, especially those that are new in business or who are not business savvy, but might be experienced in their own business. So you've been a coach for five years and your authority score is a five. That means Google doesn't know who you are. Okay. This score right here is one of the most important metrics that you can work on to get up. Okay. I am fighting between 29 and 31, 29, 31, 29, 31, right? And so I'm like really trying to get into the 30s and I get there and then I have a couple things and then I go back down to 29, right? But this number is really important. So this is content over the course of one week, okay? So how much am I ranking? Who's finding me? And then where are we? right? So organic traffic, what's going on? 
And this was just pulled about an hour ago. Okay, so I can see what's happening with these different competitors. And I can see how many referring domains there are, how many backlinks they have. And there can be good backlinks and toxic backlinks, which I'm actually going to talk about in my newsletter next week for the business coaching. I'm going to show you how you check your authority score and then also how you take bad backlinks and tell Google to not associate you with that content. Okay. I do that exercise every Monday morning because for some reason people attach to my Shutterstock images on my website and they're not good sites but I can't control that they're grabbing those images, right? So, but what I can do is tell Google, like I didn't authorize those people to take my images and they're always the same group of like URLs in a specific language. So I can very easily pick out the bad backlinks and tell Google to disavow them, okay? So this is a little bit more about like the first step is looking at competitors, okay? We do competitive assessments for people all of the time. I actually am going over one tomorrow with a sleep consultant who gave me five different competitors and we pulled the reporting in a, a much bigger detail than this to see where they ranked against those people. If you're a brand new sleep coach, your competitor isn't taking care of babies, okay? So just be clear on that. You gotta find people that are in your geo, in your niche, in your state that are coming up when they Google personal trainer near me, sleep coach near me, contractor near me, right? Like those are your competitors because Google's thinking that's who, you know, are the people that are going up against you. The second thing I look at, which is right here, is a specific term, right? So in this case, I looked up newborn wake windows. The term wake windows has a ton of searches. So what's the global volume? What's the possible difficulty to rank? Okay. So right here, it's a 38% keyword difficulty for the term newborn wake windows. What does that mean? Keyword difficulty means how hard is it for me as a business owner to rank for this term? Okay. So in this case, it's possible to rank for newborn wake windows. And guys, there's a volume of 10,000 searches a month for newborn wake windows. Hell yeah, start writing about that, right? Especially if you're in Belgium. There's 20 a month, but if it's possible and you can rank one for that, you're grabbing 20 new clients potentially who are gonna go out to your website to read your blog on newborn wake windows and then hopefully convert with good messaging to that, right? These are the questions that are being asked of the search engines. How long are newborn wake windows? How many wake windows? What to do? And then the volume of related terms, wake windows by age, 12,000. Three-month-old sleep schedule, 8,000. Newborn sleep schedule, 8,000. No wonder why my sleep schedules are the number one downloaded freebie on my site, my little schedule generator, okay? So this is a sample of like identifying a search topic, okay, right here. And we're gonna get more into SEO later in the sessions here and how you start to find these terms. And I'm gonna show you two tools that are free and or less than like 10 bucks for a year to teach you how I do this very strategically, okay? So that's part of what we're looking at. In addition, when I'm pulling these types of reports for people, I'm looking at what else the keyword gaps are, where the keyword overlaps are, right? So 3.9 thousand keywords, 2.3 thousand, 9.4 thousand. Hey, you know what? I ain't doing so bad, right? The Cradle Coach Academy, 198, and We Sleep, 98, okay? So there's some keyword overlap here. So I wanna show you what those keywords are because I wanna look at like, how can I rank higher than you? Because they might be ranking higher than me for certain stuff, right? I gotta figure out, guys, how do I make strategic content for that? Okay, so let me just pull up one other slide that I was gonna share with you guys so you could see it. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that out here and I apologize, I had to drop it back off. It's too hard with recording to try to make sure I show you the right screens. Okay, so right here, we've got the actual data that comes up in the systems we use. Everything I do is very strategic, my friends. So these are different search terms as keywords that come up and then the intent, okay? 
Is it informational? Is it transactional? Meaning they want a buying a mattress, right? Is it that they just want information about wake windows? You're not buying newborn wake windows. They want information. So intent and these little terms have to do with what the intent of that content is, right? So as you start to look, I can see I am not ranking right now for any of these particular keywords, right? But Dreamland Baby, or not Dreamland Baby, Dream Baby Sleep is ranking 12th for something about the Newton mattress. They're ranking 19th for something else about the Newton, a little bit more of a long tail keyword. And then they're ranking 67 for the term baby mattress. Okay. Are those things as a sleep coach I want to rank for? Well, probably a, a new baby mattress, like for a newborn. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see correlation, right? If somebody's searching for Newton mattresses, they probably have a newborn or they're expecting, and they're going to expect to have trouble with sleep too. Nobody else here is ranking for anything either. So right now, my sweet sleeper and dream baby sleep are ranking for these things and I want in on the pot, right? So the keyword difficulty for some of these terms is kind of right in the middle road. It's not impossible to rank, but it's not low hanging fruit. We do this all different ways. I can do untapped and I could do keyword difficulty easy. I'm not going to throw a lob to you guys that way. I do have a sleep coaching business too, right? But like I could go in and look at keyword difficulty and be like, ooh, this one's easy. And I could totally rank on like page one in a month, right? These are going to be a little more challenging, but they're opportunities. Right now, I'm not ranking for anything. I want to rank for wake windows, nine-month-old sleep schedule, five-month-old wake window, when to transition to a toddler bed. Nobody's ranking for anything but her. Okay, well, how do I take what she's doing here and make my own blog? that is rich in when to transition to a toddler bed. And we're gonna dive into exactly how I'll write that blog post in a couple of days. So you've gotta come back for the SEO one because that's where I actually dive into how to take the SEO research and then turn it into a blog post that helps Google to crawl it, to know that you know what you're talking about, and then to ultimately start to rank. Let me tell you something, my friends, you're not gonna rank tomorrow. All right. And I don't like when I talk to people and they're like, I blogged for a month, but it didn't really change anything. I spent almost $100,000 on SEO only. And then I realized after I figured out and learned what they were doing, how I could do it myself. So I no longer have an SEO agency I was spending $3,000 a month with. In July, I stopped, but I didn't stop. I stopped paying them and I started doing things my own way because I could get way more strategic with tools like this. I could write content that actually spoke at the level I needed to get conversions. So I took this upon myself because I felt that I could have better ROI for a less investment each month. And I have. I grew between last summer and now 3,000 views on my website a month. So I'm doing something right. Okay, my friends, it takes time. SEO is a long play, but once you're there, as long as you do things to stay there once a week, once a month, you're there. Whereas with social media, we put so many eggs in one basket, right? And then you stop posting and it's crickets. And then if you stop posting for a week or a month, guess what happens? They don't show your content, right? So don't do that. I am very strategic about what I do with SEO and I do social media because it's fun. That's not where my clients come from, okay? My clients come from organic search. So it's really important to understand and identify what your goal is as well with the content you're creating, okay? Then you gotta look at content curation. What are your templates look like? I'll tell you, I use a really cool site, which I'm gonna show you, that helps me to find good content every single week, template-wise, okay? So there's this website called Creative Market. Whoops, hold on, my Creative Market. So there's this website called Creative Market. Okay, I'm gonna go out and share my screen and I'll show you that. And it's a really cool site. It's totally free to like go out and browse. And then once you're out there, you can actually go out and find a ton of content, okay? So if you went up to templates and themes and went right here to templates and themes at the top, okay, you'll see social media templates. 
And then within social media templates, what are you looking for? There's also a search at the top. So I could say I'm looking for story templates, right? And then all I'm gonna get are a whole bunch of story templates. And I can quickly look down them and go, yes, this is great. It's gonna save me so much time. Maybe I own a restaurant. Maybe I'm a business coach. Maybe I'm a social manager, right? Maybe I just want simple coaching templates or maybe I want, you know, an, a complete Canva social media kit. I mean, I there's a million things, as you can see. There's 185,000 story templates out here, right? So there's no shortage of templates, guys. But this is a great way to help you achieve on-brand consistency. Don't hire a social media manager because I can guarantee they're going out to creative market and they're buying a template and they're buying a brand kit and they're charging you $500 to give you five tiles that they pulled out of this template they spent 27 bucks for, okay? Come out and take a look at this stuff because the creative market is awesome. They have so much different stuff out here Things like flyers and resumes and brochures, like sometimes I'll come in here and I'm like corporate coaching brochure and I just grab a template just for something different, my friends, okay? Lead magnets and eBooks. Now Canva does have a lot of the stuff in here, but for creating different things for social, I really like creative market because I can get one thing that is on brand across the types of content, Okay. So what do I mean by that? Well, you might be a holistic coach, right? I'm going to get the story template. I'm going to get the post template. I might get a podcast template. I might get an ad template. Like all of those things could be within one of these different types of coaching packs. So you've got to kind of look at what's in there and then what you can get. Okay. Creative market is like one of the best kept secrets for coaches because you're going to spend all this time trying to create content. And if you're not a creative person, your stuff's going to come off looking shabby, right? Don't do that. Spend 20 bucks and you'll use these for years to come. And they're very easy in Canva to just go, my color's not bright orange. It's C27A90. Boom. Change across all templates and everything's now pink for tiny transitions, right? So it's a really cool way that you can quickly create your content across the different content types that we identified at the start and use that to cover all the different things that you're talking about, right? And then talking about scheduling, right? You've got to find a tool that you can schedule in, right? That feeds all the different places you want your content to go. Now, Facebook is changing their API. So one of the things that really was always a thorn in my side was not every scheduler went to Facebook groups, right? I've tried Planoly and Planable and Hootsuite and Hello Wolfie. I mean, you name it, I've tried it. Kelly will laugh because I probably spent $10,000 last year just on social media schedulers till I finally found one that resonated with me. And you can shoot me an email, Courtney at CourtneyZens.com, and I'll tell you what I use. But... I probably spent thousands, I know I spent thousands of dollars on different ones because I hate all of them because none of them did everything. You could do this in this one, but you couldn't tag in that one. You know what I mean? And it was just like, oh, so I finally found one that does 98% of it, but you have to pay attention because Google changed their APIs. So the ability to like go live and push out or use a scheduler to push out, right? Those changes that they just announced at the beginning of 2024 are going to have huge ripple effects. And I believe it takes place April 22nd when the API feed will no longer work, meaning social schedulers will no longer push to Facebook groups. The ability for you to use certain plugins like StreamYard to go live to a Facebook group can't do that anymore. Facebook's blocking the ability for those APIs to feed. Okay. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can also send me an email and I'll happily explain and share more about it. But it's going to put a lot of businesses actually out of business because their whole model was this kind of architecture that they set up and by Facebook chopping them off at the knees, their business is done, right? And it's sad. I was reading an article in the New York uh, Times the other day about it and how it's like putting companies that were very successful, six, seven, eight figure companies have to shut their doors because that's that was their business model, right? Um, you got to think about cross promotion too. How is the content that you're putting here going to get published there? What type of content with someone are you tagging them and making sure that they share? Or you're kind of cross-promoting, like I'll write a blog post for you and get a backlink. If you write a blog post for me and you'll get a backlink, and then we cross-share, we put it out in each other's newsletters so it's new audience exposure, right? I do all of this stuff every single month in my business, and it starts with, over here, a calendar. 
that I have organized. It was like a glass calendar. I love it. If you want to ask me, um, I got it on Amazon, but it basically is something I sharpied a calendar onto with like a ruler. So I made a, a calendar so that I could dry erase and the Sharpie wouldn't come off each month. And then I just write the new days of the month. And then I can quickly look and go, oh, Chris's blog on the seven month wake windows due today. Great. Let me make sure I put that out and then get the reel that Chris sent me posted at the same time, drawing people over to the blog right? Content creation can be totally paralyzing, my friends. There are weeks that has paralyzed me because I'm trying to be all things to all people and on all the platforms and I had to let it go. Here's where I can be consistent. Here's how I can effectively do it in the amount of time I wish to designate to it. Here's how I can know that I'm doing it enough so that it actually drives results and isn't for naught, right? And then where do I start? If you don't have any social media presence or any idea how to do it, pick one platform. That's it. And get real good at it. And then expand, right? But don't try to be in 100 places and then not do any of them consistently, okay? So hopefully you found today's session very helpful. Reminder, homework's gonna be posted out in the Facebook group. So be sure to jump out there. You got the link when you registered, and if not, it'll be in the notes here below, so you can jump out there and participate in the homework. Any questions you have, let me know, and I'll see you tomorrow as we dive into session four of Level Up Lead Gen. Again, I'm Courtney Zentz, the Accidental Business Coach. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye for now.